Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and today we're going to do a little update on the Roads to Pickup project. So, uh, we kind of mentioned it in, in the live. We are trying to get this truck together, at least to display as a project, at the Wheels of Time show in McCungy. It's a big, like, three day uh, street rod show that's been going for many, many years, and uh, we always bring a bunch of cars out and have a great time. So, we like to bring a project car. This one, I think this year is it. So, Steve's been working on a bunch of the wiring. It's a little bit of a of the rat's nest right now because he's trying to just loom everything and, and do all that stuff. But we have all our brake stuff and clutch and all that stuff from the old Yankee kits all hooked up. We got working brakes now. Steve got a old turn signal hooked up here um, on this. And we should be able to get some stuff set up to um, get this thing hopefully by the end of the video running. I have a bunch of stuff to do. We got to figure out colon hoses and uh, run fuel lines, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to take you along for a ride, show you a little bit of the, what goes into buttoning these cars up. And hopefully by the end, we can maybe make it run and possibly drive in and out. But at the very least, we're going to try and get this thing to run in the truck. So let's get started. All right, so uh, last week, my nephew that you guys have seen, he's a little guy that's helping us out in the shop. Uh, I had him test him with making a battery box for the uh, the Roadster pickup, and he kind of got it roughed in. I need to grind some of his welds. He's he's doing good, but he's still learning. Uh, but we have this little battery. We have this in the Shrill Coupe, and it actually works pretty good. It's a small battery, um, and it's uh, five, 600 cold cranky, cranking amps, and as long as your car is something that runs half decent, it actually works pretty well. So what we did was we made a battery tray that basically you could lay down the battery like that in. We can run our terminals right down off of it and down below and go to everything. And then we're gonna actually weld a plate that uh, my nephew Evan cut out already with the plasma cutter. I'm gonna weld a plate to the frame that kind of boxes it in there and then make it so that it actually drill and tap the plate. And uh, this battery tray will bolt into the side of the frame and that will get the uh, get the battery hanging and then Steve can continue all his connections. He's kind of got stuff just running and sitting uh, just roughly where he thinks they're gonna be. Now that I get a battery in there, he can really start terminating some connections, which will be good. So I'm gonna finish this battery tray up, get it well, the plate welded in and get this bolted in and that'll be one big thing checked off the list. Personal, Steve, you, you from underneath tell me what you so you got some wiring there. This is going to go up here, right? Up under the dash. Yeah. Alright. So that, I was thinking something like this. Yeah. I, I could, Center. I can stay behind it. I can run the fuel line behind it. Yep. Yeah. It'd be so I'll weld this base plate, box the frame in right there. Yep. Like that. And then it's the, the box itself has studs on it. Mm hmm. So the only thing that'll be a little bit of a pain is just getting the nuts started, but I think I made them a little long, so I might chop them off so you don't have, oh, okay. you don't have to get around them as much. Right. But. Okay.
we just need two short little pieces and that'll I've never, never made a weirder, weirder, more weird piece of tubing in my life. But when you put it all together, kind of works. works. Still gotta put the. The what? Or this just needs that. I mean, you might just switch that out with something smaller. Might yeah, be, yeah. It might be easier than just switching that to something bigger. Yeah, if you got one. Well, the plier things are there. I don't know if that's... I think that's the ticket right there. <laughs> Look at how wacky that looks. But it fits. Yeah. It's only yeah. wacky if it don't work. That was like I was making a one for the Schroll Coupe. I was like, this thing is just... Right. And now yeah, I don't even notice it when yeah. you look at the car, but... Right, yeah, you just you get used to look seeing it, yep. Yeah, I think that'll work out well. Heck yeah. Good job, Luke. Mm -hmm. You directed me. Heck yeah. Need a... That was the only way we were getting, like, straights to get in. <laughs> That's for sure. But the direct method wasn't working. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Hey. There, yeah. So the question is, can we get it in? Almost wants to be just outside of that. Is that going to interfere with the gas line there? The gas lines are going to be right there, so. I'm um, next to it. Okay. I'm trying to figure that out if it's interfering here because yeah. you can't magically make it go mm -hmm. around that. And we were talking about putting a board there, so yeah. that doesn't work. It has to be where you have to cut something around the.
running. That's right. Oh man. That was the contract you signed yesterday. I am going to get the eye because I like it a little bit. <laughs> we used to wait enough. That proves the concept. <laughs> yep. First thing I need to do is get the screws. Turn signal. 
about... Oh, that turn signal. Yeah. Works. Check that out. We're still having grounding issues. Yeah, but that looks cool. I like how it's the, the little ring with the turn signal. Yeah. It's just like incredibly cool. Yep. Did the light come on in the back at all or no? No, you have just the green light on. Yeah. And you're just lit in the front again. So yeah, yeah, I got a ground issue. How about, um, Luke, you wanna check out the, let's check out the headlights. They were working, right? Yep. <laughs> we think that's a safe one. Yep. Yeah, we never know though. No. Go ahead. Yes. The working headlights, which is cool. Hit the um, turn signal on this side again. Uh, Steve put a these cool little amber bulbs. I guess Napa was telling us they're like motorcycle. Yeah, guys. they're old motorcycle light bulbs. So, but they're super cool amber lights. You can see them with the headlights on, which is nice. And uh, and we're utilizing the old marker lights as turn signals now. So. Kind of neat to do that. So very cool. A couple little grounds, connections we got to work on, and we'll be yep. full lighting work in here. Probably just condensation again, or yeah. just residue from. Yeah, that's condensation. Remember how cold this thing gets when it runs. That's why it needs that the the coolant heater because yeah. it actually heats it up. Yep. Good. I mean, that time when I went to refire it, it yeah, without even touching the gas, it started to idle. That's so. amazing how cool that gets. Yeah. The base of the car. Wow. Holy smokes! You feel it right where the venturi is. It. Right it's, where the, bla like the blades cold. are. Yeah. Right where the blades are when the, where the air's. But you want to. I mean, it makes sense too because you kind of want a cold charge. Sure. Into the... Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that in the middle of summer. Yeah. All right. So successfully, we got it to run. We had a couple little fuel leaks in the beginning that we just had to button up from, you know, throwing a truck together from nothing. These things will happen. But nice, nice thing is we ran this. Uh, if you remember the beginning of the project. We got this engine running on the run stand. We ran it with coolant. We already kind of knew what it was going to take to get it to run, and it actually started easier this time than you know it did on the stand. So got it running. Steve's been working on the lights and stuff. He got all the lights all worked out and actually got new 12 volt sealed beam 
lights in these old gumball, as they call them, um, guide headlights. Um, we got the amber turn signals in them. I'll turn some of the lights on for you guys to see. So, key on. Got headlights, all right. So you got those amber bulbs. It's super cool in the in the uh, in the top there. I think it looks really neat, and you'll you know it's pretty easy to see. So if you go in the back, I'll turn the left side on. Turn the lights out. Actually, I guess we could leave the tail light on. Yeah. Uh, but this is like the coolest tail light I've ever found. We found this at an estate in uh, South Jersey that we've been picking lately, and it is just freaking amazing. So just the the arrow that lights up on it. It's just so cool, and it's like in amazing condition. It's, it's pretty crazy. So, really cool. I gotta find a 1928 uh, Pennsylvania plate. That's just a, a plate we used when my nephew Evan and I were putting the uh, bracket together. We just used, but it runs, it's got brakes, the lights work. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So, a uh, huge, huge uh, update on the uh, Roadster pickup project. We're going to be working on just, Steve has to finish up a couple little things with the wiring, the terminal block, um, and uh, I need to start working on headers, and we're gonna work on a gas pedal. So hopefully next video, we're gonna be able to fire it with some headers, and then shortly after that, we'll be able to actually take it around the property or around the block, which is gonna be exciting. I cannot wait. It's gonna be so, so awesome. So thank you guys for following along. Really appreciate it. Let me know what you think of the Roadster pickup and the, uh, all the lights and everything working. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.